Hi, I'm Margaret Martin at Milieu Guide. I'm a physiotherapist and I've developed an exercise program for people that are concerned about their bones and wanting them to be stronger. In this sample, you're going to have an example of a whole routine that we do in our season two, designed for active to athletic. You get your warm up, you get some balance, some strength, and we always wrap up with a cool down. So I hope you enjoy it, have fun, and have a great workout, and have a great day. Now, we're going to start with a modified heel drop. And if you've been watching my blogs, you might have already learned this one. So this is a really nice way to begin. We're going to just pause in a gentle squat. You notice how I've still sat my butt back. My knees are bent. We're just going to start our practice with a little mindfulness and gratitude for our health, for the health of our family members, for the sun that might be shining right now, for the snowflakes or whatever you're experiencing, something in your life that's giving you some reason to be grateful. It might just be this video. I hope so. So now we're going to take a breath in as we rise up onto the balls of our feet. And as we come down, we're going to go back to where we started from. So we're going to go down. And we're going to repeat. Now, I have placed, put my moccasins on because when I was practicing my agility drills on this wood floor, it's a little bit slippery. But by all means, if your surface allows you to practice barefooted, then that's great. If you feel like you want to wear your flat soled running shoes, I don't recommend regular running shoes with high sides to them. Inhale, reach up and exhale down. We'll do one more. Nice breath in, rising onto the balls of the fifth and the first toes and then all the way down. Great. Now, you don't need to have these chairs here, but I put them here so that I can walk you through doing a lateral lunge. It's a new move for a lot of my clients, so I'm going to assume it's a new move for you as well. You're in the middle of your mat. We're going to be taking a nice long step to the side. So you take as wide a lateral step as you're comfortable, and your butt is going back as though you're sitting on the stool or chair behind you. Bring it back together. Inhale. Opposite side. Inhale. And out to the side. Inhale, center. And exhale back. The leg that's staying straight is ha actually a little bit soft, so it's not totally locked out. This is a great move if you play tennis, racquetball, or what's the popular one, hmm, I should remember, pickleball. All right, so keeping this lateral move going, very healthy for stretching the adductors and keeping you mobile on the court. Good, nicely done. All right, so now we get to revisit our lunges. I put a chair here in case you feel you need some stability. For balance, you can always use the chair. So starting our reverse lunge, remembering that we'll be more stable with our feet a little wider apart. And we're gonna go back, pulling into a wide row. Inhale, pull back. Inhale. And back, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Inhale, arms forward. Exhale, back. Now, if you felt like you wanted some stability throughout, you could certainly be doing one arm and then turn around with, or use a stability on each side and alternate arms. So let's just do one more on each leg. And back. Very nice. Now we might use that chair in case you need it for your balance. We're gonna do a little balance drill here. Still part of our warm up. 
we're walking a line. So we're going to go step, two, three, kick up, two, three, step back, two, three, and kick up, two, three. Nice. Now we're going to repeat that, kicking forward, two, three, step back, two, three, kick forward, two, three, step forward, two, three, kick to the side, two, three, stepping back, two, three, kick to the side, two, three, forward, two, three, kick behind, two, three, one, two, three, and kick behind, two, three. Now I'd like you to challenge yourself if you felt, yeah, that was okay, but I didn't feel very challenged. Now I want you to, we're going to repeat it again, but with gently turning your head either from side to side or up and down. You can also, if you felt that you were losing your balance um, a bit too much, you could almost up the line or have a little bit more distance between your toe and your heel. So let's get going. All right. Looking to the side, two, three, and up, two, three, and back, two, three, and up, with the knee, two, and three, and this time I'm going to look forward and up and down, and I'm going to straight knee in front of me, two, three, looking up and down, two, three, straight knee, two, three, forward, two, Three, I'm going to choose to look on diagonals as I bring the leg to the side. Two, three, and down. Two, three. Leg that comes up on a diagonal to the side. Two, three, and forward. One more is going to be our kick back. Two, three, and kicking back. Two, three. And so move your head at a pace that challenges you. Two, three and that you're feeling that you're always working your balance. So, awesome. I hope you're as warmed up as I am. And we are ready to move into our strength sets. We are going to begin with building from that modified heel drop. We're going to go into a gentle jump to begin. So, when I do that jump, I'm gonna keep this chair in front of me. You can do the same. You're going to notice that I'm going down just as we did with the squat, just as we did with our modified heel drop. The knees are stretched apart and we are simply coming up. If you haven't done a jump in a whole long time, you might want to have something in front of you, but ideally use your arms to help you with the momentum of the jump. So breath in. Jumps can be tough on our pelvic floor. so. Forgot to mention in the beginning, make sure you're really blowing and you're squeezing, especially through the landing. Okay, so breath. Breath in. So I will breathe all the way through till I've landed. Exhale through. And two more. Good. Just as we did with our squats, so I didn't mention it during, but by all means, if you want to keep your head in alignment with your spine, keeping your head up encourages a little more um, alignment of lordosis and extension through the spine. So just something to keep mindful. If you do drop your head, keep your chest lifted the whole time. And this is going to be the same thing with our next exercise. We are going to be loading one hip at a time with doing a bird nod, which is a great both balance and hip working exercise. We're going to start with a very small angle. So you're going to notice as I shift all my weight onto my right foot, my left foot is coming off. I'm going to drop my body 10 degrees as my leg goes behind me 10 degrees. I'm now going to drop 20 degrees, 30 degrees. I'm hinging around the hip joint. And this is as far as we're going to go for the first set. And we come back nice and tall. You can put your foot down just long enough to then transfer back again. 
If you feel comfortable not holding the surface, you can always use your arms on either side to counterbalance, blow as you go, engaging your core, and back up. Arms relax in between, inhale, and exhale. Now, by making a nice strong butt, you're keeping a strong extension. That activation of your butt wakes up your back muscles as well. So breath, keep everything in your back body strong, including your neck extensors. So every, nothing's caving in or giving in to gravity. Breath and back. Good. We're going to take that over to the other side. Breath in. And I'd rather you do 10 degrees with really good form than go further without. Now, another thing you're going to think about is your pelvic bones, that they are staying facing the chair. So try not to roll out. It throws the weight off on the foot and will affect your balance. So breath. Everything stays forward, heel is reaching back, butt is squeezing tight, and release. Breath in, and good, and one more time. Excellent. With the third exercise, we're going to give our legs a little break, but work our arms really well. So, we did scapular stabilization in the first Stronger Bone, Stronger Body, but we did it with straight arms. So, we will review that, and then for the second and third set, we will build up on that. So, I'm going to turn so that you can see my shoulder blades. I want you to Really engage your shoulder blades down and back. So as you're doing, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to stretch the belt that doesn't stretch at all. And as I'm trying to stretch the belt, my shoulder blades are squeezing together. As my shoulder blades squeeze together, I'm gonna to take my breath in and I'm gonna blow. Bringing my arms up as high as I can, allowing shoulder blades to keep riding up the rib cage. Good. But the whole time I am stretching the band. Good. Breath in and blow. And back down. Now I have a tendency to hyperextend my knees and to arch my back. So, and many people do. So make sure you keep those knees soft. You keep your pelvic muscles engaged as well as your deep core muscles. So breath in and lifting up. And good job. Let's go for five more. Now, if you feel that you can get to 90 degrees before you start compensating, whether it's straightening your knees or arching your back or having some shoulder pain, then by all means, go just through the range that you're comfortable with. We have one more to do. And right down. Whew. Who ever said you couldn't get a workout with a belt? There we go. So, we're going to take our jumps, just another little notch up. So this time, we're going to jump from side to side. Placing feet hip width apart. And if you feel comfortable, more comfortable having a chair on either side of you, by all means, breath in and exhale. You can make those jumps as low or as high as you want. We're going for 10 jumps and we have two more. Good job. 
great. So especially if you tend to leak, make sure you really engage those pelvic floor muscles. Um, our third or second, going back to the next exercise, sorry, it's our bird nods, which is now going to be at a deeper angle. So if, looking at these rungs, if I was on the first one heading towards the first rung, I'm going to head to the second rung this time. So we're going to go to a deeper angle as long as you can keep your form. So again, you have your imaginary stick, the back of your head, mid spine, sacrum, and down through your supporting, your, the leg that's going behind you. So breath in and exhale. We're going a little bit deeper, closer to a 45 degree angle and up. If you, like many of my clients when they begin this, feel that you need some support, by all means, use fingertip support. If you feel like you need more support and you want both hands, then please use it. Your form is most important. You don't want a whole lot of wobbling of your knee. And it's gonna be our last one. with the right leg supporting. So now let's do the same thing with the left leg supporting. Breath in, thinking really tall. All that beautiful posture work that you've been doing. We're integrating it into this exercise. Engaging your glutes. As I tighten my glutes, that fires the back extensors on the opposite side. You can feel them. We're all connected as I keep my chest lifted and my gaze slightly up. That's firing my back extensors and neck extensors. And this will be the last one. Excellent. Good, let's give our hips a little wiggle. And then we are going to do the belt one on the second sequence through. This time, we're going to keep the elbows bent at 90 degrees. So first time we had the arms straight all the way. You're gonna um, keep, try to maintain that 90 degree angle and that 90 degree angle is gonna, at the elbow, gonna stay with you the whole time. The belt is at your wrist, so um, if you have any discomfort at the wrist, you could certainly move it a little bit further uh, down the forearm if that's more comfortable for you. It shouldn't be anything that stretches. So just a nice, your husband's belt works great. Um, and the width of that belt, just in case I didn't mention it earlier, is the width of your elbows. All right, so breath in. And now we're lifting. I'm keeping my elbows in. It's my wrists that are trying to stretch. I'm coming up to 90 and then coming all the way back down. Now, as I was doing that, I could feel my back wanting to arch and my knees wanting to straighten. So we're gonna make sure we keep everything in good alignment. Breath in and blow. And down. And blow. Good job, these are tough. We have five more to go, breath. But if things are yelling at you because you haven't done these either forever or ever, then you know do as many as you can. And each time you follow this video, you add another repetition. This is our eighth, you're doing great. Last two, breath. Keep those knees bent, keep the core engaged, keep your ribs to your pelvis. That distance stays the same. 
and this is the last one. Elbows to 90 degrees, good job. Nice job. When I said ribs to pelvis, I realize that's a term I don't use a lot with you guys. So what I mean by that, when you start, if I'm aware of my ribs and my pelvis distance here and here, that as I'm lifting, I don't want that to change either up or down. That when I'm in my solid position, I've recruited my abdominals to hold this in a really solid neutral position. So that's what I mean by that. So something to integrate. Um, it's also important to keep even with our jumps. So something to keep in mind. This time with our jumps, instead of going side to side, we're going to go forward and back. Just as with our agility drills, jumping back is a bit scary at times. So if you haven't done it in some time, you might first do it with you know, your, your bed being behind you. Um, always better safe than sorry. So we're going to begin. Actually, let's begin with a forward jump. And that way, if the bed was right behind you, you would jump forward, and then you would know then when you jump back, what you would expect in terms of distance. We're going to let the arms come behind, breath in, and we're just jumping over the line. It doesn't have to be a three meter jump breath, and just over the line. And now we're jumping equally as far behind. You'll notice that when I'm landing my jump, we have last one, good, that I'm landing on the ball of my foot and then the heel is coming down, just as we did with the modified heel drops at the very beginning. So well done. Now, let's go into our bird nod. But this time, we're going to be aiming towards um, the our body being as horizontal as possible. So this is as far as you, or close as you need it to be, to feel safe and secure, or you might even decide you want it to the side. So I'll show it both ways. So let's start on the right side, breath, and remembering that we're hinging from the hip, everything's staying in straight lines. So as my heel comes up, my head is going down, well, my whole body is going down. My head's just following and then coming back up. Now, some of us have very long ham hamstrings, which means you're able to go all the way down with very little knee bend. Um, I start to get tight. I start to feel the pull in my hamstrings here, so I have to bend my knee a little bit to be able to come down and keep my pelvis level, because otherwise the hamstrings are wanting us to pull away because of the tightness as well. And it's a bit easier on the muscles when we rotate. Doesn't mean it's better for us, it just means it's easier. Good, remember, nice tight glute on that lifted side. If I use the chair to the side, then I would have it here the whole time I'm coming down. So that might be something as you're, you know, maybe you have a compromised knee, you don't want to be doing this as you're coming down and compromising your knee. Make sure you stay very stable. We're taking it to the other side. So I'll do the first few facing you. Breath in and we come down. Again, the pelvic bones are moving together. So one isn't going down more than the other. Everything's moving together. The heel is reaching back and I, sh I know I tend to look up at the camera, but I should stay long through the back of my neck. Breath, and blowing as you go. I'm keeping my rib to pelvic distance equal. So everything's solid through the body. You're getting a really good core workout, really good hip workout, nice loading through the neck of the femur. I'm going to do a sideways for the last two. Breath and blow. It's 
always better to have a little support there just in case. Good job, nicely done. All right, we're moving on to the last challenge with the belt. And so this is one that you and I have to work up towards because even the last one I was like, this is pretty challenging. So um, we're going to try to lift above 90 degrees, meaning that that belt is gonna start going over our head. All right, so soft knees, shoulder blades are tucked down and back. Breath in and blow. And down. And blow. And down. I guess if I'm asking you to be challenged, I should be too. Good. Nice. We're halfway through the set. Come on. Good job. Keep those knees bent. Keep that core tucked. Good. Head in line with your body. That's it. Keep your gaze straight ahead. Ooh, almost done. This is our eighth one. Good. We'll finish this set, but if you want to stop at eight, you certainly have my permission. That's where I want to be stopping at. Good. And last one. Breath. And good. Now, hopefully, as you've watched this video a few times, you've gone to the 10th repetition. So, whew. Good job. Shake it out. Shake out your arms. All right, time to um, wrap up and stretch out some of these muscles that we've worked so hard on. So with our quads, um, I'm gonna keep us standing actually because oftentimes people are like, well, you know, what is my quad stretch in standing? So you're probably gonna want a little something for support so that you can just really focus on the stretch itself. You're going to bring one heel up towards your bottom now, this is where your supporting knee comes in. So I want it to be soft. I want you to think about your balance and your even weight bearing through your foot. Next thing to think about is tightening your abdominals. So here, you're actually thinking about keeping your pelvis pulled towards your lower ribs. And that's gonna stop your pelvis from arching back. Because your quadriceps attach to the front of your pelvis, if you allow everything to just be slack in the front, all you're doing is overarching your lower back as opposed to truly getting a good quad stretch. So let's come back. Oh, I'm gonna come back if you didn't go there. That's okay, good, good. Knees bent, so you're still using your supporting quads. You're keeping everything nice and tight. Your posture is beautiful, nice and long. Breath in. And exhale, just bring your leg right back. I'm going to hold this for three full delicious breaths, just nice and easy. Breath in and out. Good job. And throughout the day, there's nothing that stops us from just, you know, taking 30 seconds to take a couple of slow, deep breaths. Just bringing the rhythm of our breath down tells our body we're totally in control, everything's all right. And that's something we always have control of, is our breath. All right, nicely done. Hopefully you felt a nice stretch through the front of your quad. And we're going to take that to the other side. So exactly the same thing. So you take a nice relaxed breath in. You're holding. 
and you're going to start to drop back. Your supporting knee is bent. Good. Keeping your abdominals nice and tight so that you don't over arch your back. Good. And continue to think tall. Continue to just focus on taking a really easy breath in and out. Your stretches should always feel comfortable, not painful at all. If you're doing a quad stretch and you start to feel it in the knee joint itself, go back to the lesson in our first season of rolling your quads. And it's still something that you're going to want to practice is rolling your quads on a regular basis to make sure you don't develop any tender spots in those quads and ensuring that you can get a nice delicious stretch and keeps them flexible and healthy. Lovely. And let's take a nice breath in, reaching to the sky. Good. You're going to bring your arms down and I want you to hug yourself. So. We did worked on our rows and we're going to, by giving yourself a nice big hug, you are stretching those muscles that you are working between shoulder blade and spine. Good. Notice which hand is on top. We're going to take a breath in again and we're going to go back with the opposite arm on top. Give yourself a nice big hug and go, good job for working out today.